Ah, Berlin. A cosmopolitan home to the world. But only if you can see it. This, my friends, is the view from my apartment window at four in the afternoon. Aww. Sad audience sigh indeed. But more on that later. What's up everyone, if you're new to these parts, my name's Joe Bauer, I make outdoorsy films, travel videos, the occasional recipe, and I'm an American with seven years of life in Germany under my belt, here to tell you about the pros and cons of living in Berlin. Or, as they probably say in Berliner, schlimm und nicht so schlimm. First pro, summers in Berlin. Trust me when I say that few experiences in life beat simply existing in Berlin during the summer. Because the sun is such a rarity at other times of the year, seeing it in June, July, and August makes the experience all the more euphoric. You'll see people just standing on the sidewalk, their eyes closed, looking up at the sun and absorbing it like they're a freaking solar panel. I'll talk a bit more about Berlin summers in a second, but first, a con. The most obvious con, the winters. Look, I've lived in colder, snowier places. I survived years under the slushy, blizzard oppression of Cleveland and Chicago, where the winter wind pierces your bones and renders you incapable of moving without a good, let's say, five layers of clothing on. It's not the cold that gets you in Berlin, it's the darkness. In peak winter, it's pitch black out by 3.30 in the afternoon. Now, call me old fashioned, but I grew up under the assumption that afternoon meant I didn't need a flashlight to throw the fucking garbage out. And when the days are cloudy too, the darkness just starts to eat away at your soul. Almost every immigrant or transplant to Berlin I know questions their sanity this time of year, wondering why we continue to put ourselves through this. That is, until this spring comes, we slip back into summer and we can't imagine living anywhere else. Speaking of, the lakes. In general, Germans spend as much time as possible outside in the summer. In other parts of the country, that might mean heading to the hills, hiking in the mountains, but in Berlin, it means going to the lakes. One of my favorite things is planning a long, sweaty-ass run to one of the lakes and jumping in at the end. Even better, I'm meeting friends who've brought some beer and snacks to nash on. Another con, the Ausländerbehörde, or foreigner's office. Few experiences are as miserable as a trip to the foreigner's office where you have to bring God knows how many documents with you just for the official to ask for something that's not actually required and pray to the powers that be that they're not too grumpy to extend your visa. I've shared a pretty hairy experience before on my Substack, but visiting the foreigner's office, of course, isn't unique to living in Berlin. We had to do it in Dusseldorf as well. But Berlin's foreigner's office is so backlogged with appointments that we've reached a bottleneck of remarkable ineptitude, made even worse because they're opening a new central office in 2024, so all of the district offices have basically stopped processing anything. They're warning that applications for citizenship will take a minimum of two years. So how's that for German efficiency? <laughs> all right, let's get another pro out there. Trains on trains on trains. Getting around Berlin without a car is a breeze. Is it perfect? No. So just cool your jets, Mr. or Mrs. Well, actually, I swear whenever I say anything remotely positive about public transit in Berlin or Germany, someone pops up to tell me I'm wrong because they found a pocket or two where public transit isn't super well connected. But in general, especially coming from the US, it's wildly easy to get around by foot in public transit here. I can get to the parks, to the Grunewald Forest, or if I want to pop over to the countryside for a more remote hike or run, I can just hop on the regional train and do that. Now besides my intense loathing of cars, I truly could not imagine owning one here. Even with the issues that public transit has here, it still is often the faster option than driving. Mentioning intense loathing reminded me of another con about living in Berlin, the smoking. Considering how snobbish Europeans can be towards Americans and some of our, let's say, less than healthy eating habits, it boggles my mind how many people still voluntarily send cancer straight into their lungs. But whatever, go smoke. If people want to get on the fast track to killing themselves, that's their business. What pisses me off is how commonplace smoking still is in bars. At best, you'll get places that say they sequester smokers into another room. But anyone who's ever accidentally lit a fireplace without opening up the chimney knows that smoke isn't some sentient being who knows they're supposed to stay out of certain rooms. Oh, so sorry. Didn't realize this was the non-smoking room. I'll just waft back into the other room. Sincerest apologies. 
Now leave a comment letting me know what accent you think that was. Fortunately, my favorite bar nearby doesn't allow smoking inside, and it's totally kosher to go to some restaurants just to get a drink. But I would happily be a more regular bar patron if I could go with the confidence that I'm not going to end the night smelling like putrid garbage for simply existing in a room where a couple of people out of a whole group decide to smoke for half an hour. Another pro, the food. Smoking may be a pain in the ass, but you can always avoid it at the restaurants. And the restaurant scene is more interesting than the bar scene anyway because, and this is one of my favorite things about Berlin, you can eat pretty much the entire world in Berlin. Look, that's obviously a metaphor. There's not like some restaurant where they make flat earther pancakes. Even better, much of the international cuisine is getting more regional. So although you can still find some restaurants that sell Vietnamese pho alongside sushi, there are more and more restaurants that focus on a specific region of another country. So you've got, let's say, spicy northern Thai food instead of just Thai, Ghanaian food instead of just Africa, and Ukrainian instead of just Eastern European. And since I've read a lot about Jewish food, I appreciate that it's pretty accessible here, from the bagel bakery to a place like Banta's where you can get a kreplach on a fine dining menu. Another con. Apartment hunting. I was told shortly after moving to Berlin that you don't pick the apartment, the apartment picks you. And that couldn't have been more true for me. Fortunately, we got stupid lucky with a nice place and a great neighborhood, but now we're perfectly petrified of even entertaining the idea of looking for something else. Finding an apartment in Berlin is almost like taking on a part-time job, and that can feel a bit stifling, especially if you've got family overseas and want to entertain the idea of spending more time with them. Either you take the financial hit of paying rent on an empty apartment, a lot of rental contracts ban subletting, or you hunker down in Berlin because you're terrified of starting from scratch again. For the last pro, we'll end on an especially positive note. In Berlin, you can find your people. Berlin is easily the most open place I've ever lived. No matter who you are or what you're into, you can find like-minded people. The city generally has a clubbing reputation, and it holds up. At least as far as I can tell, I'm not particularly the clubbing type, but I know people who are, and they have no problem finding places to bop around until the early morning hours. But if, like me, that's not your thing, no worries. Maybe you're more of an active type. You can find running clubs, rock climbing gyms, or if that's not your bag, you can join a cooking class, paint some pottery, or I don't know, knit with people. I've never heard of someone moving to Berlin and having a hard time finding something to scratch their itch. The only exception to that is, of course, you do have to make an effort. If you're the introverted type and don't make an effort to meet people, then you're gonna have a hard time. But I think that's true in just about any city in the world. And that said, Berlin is such an international city, you can find folks who literally speak your language in case you're not comfortable speaking German casually, or maybe English is your second language and you just wanna relax in your mother tongue for a bit. Whatever the case may be, you can find your people if you try. All right, Berliners, what did I miss? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure you'll be incredibly passive aggressive about it. And if you're thinking of moving to Germany yourself, then watch this video on why I think Germany is the best place to move to in Europe.